All right, let's talk about the robotic revolution. I mean, it's not coming anymore, is it? It's here. But what's it really going to look like over the next, say, 15 years? That's what we're going to break down today. So let me ask you this. Are you really prepared for a world where robots are doing your chores, helping out your elderly relatives, and even working right alongside you? I know it sounds like something out of a movie, but this is not science fiction anymore. And the crazy part is, this world is showing up way, way faster than pretty much anyone expected. And this is the key to the whole thing. We're not just talking about smarter software or a better app on your phone. No, we are right at the very beginning of the embodied AI era. Think about that for a second. It means that AI is literally getting a body. It's moving out of the cloud and into our physical world right here with us. Okay, so let's start with our first section, the new age of robots. And as you're about to see, this is a huge fundamental shift, and it's about way more than just a bunch of cool machines. Which brings us to our next big question, the acceleration engine. What's powering all this? Why is everything happening at what feels like light speed all of a sudden? Well, for decades, the engine room of tech progress was something called Moore's Law. You've probably heard of it. It's basically the idea that computing power roughly doubles every two years. That steady, predictable growth is the bedrock this entire revolution is built on. It's what made complex robots even possible from a cost perspective. But here's where things get wild. A whole new dynamic is taking over. So remember that hardware doubling every two years? Well, get this. The capability of AI agents. That's doubling every seven months. Let that sink in. That is a growth curve more than three times faster. And a shift that dramatic, it changes absolutely everything. This really gets to the heart of the matter. The brain is developing faster than the body. Think about it like this. An AI brain can learn a new skill, like how to peel a potato, just by watching a bunch of videos for a couple of hours. But actually engineering a physical robot hand a body that can do that peeling reliably without squishing the potato and for a price you could actually afford, that is a much slower and harder problem to solve. And that gap between the fast brain and the slow body is crucial to understanding how this will all play out. Now, of course, it's not all just hype and hockey stick growth curves. We need a reality check here. And a big voice of caution comes from an industry legend, Rodney Brooks. He actually co-founded iRobot, the company behind the Roomba. He warns that we might be in a speculative bubble, especially when it comes to these humanoid robots. He's pointing to massive, and I mean massive, unsolved problems like battery life, cost, and of course, safety. He's reminding us all that the road from a cool demo in a lab to a reliable product in your home is incredibly long and full of potholes. Okay, so let's shift gears from the why to the what. Let's take a snapshot of the revolution as it exists right now. Robots Among Us today. What's actually happening on the ground? And what we see in the market is a really clear split. You've got your traditional industrial robots, think big arms on an assembly line, and that market's growing at a nice, steady pace. But then you have service robots. These are the ones working in hospitals, warehouses, you name it. And their growth is projected to be almost twice as fast. That's where the explosion is really happening. And when you look at a map of where these robots are, it's incredibly focused. Just five countries make up almost 80% of all installations. And out in front, by a huge margin, is China. We're talking about them installing more than half of all the new industrial robots on the entire planet. They are the undisputed leader here. So what about those fast-growing service robots? Where are they? Well, they're already making a massive impact. I mean, Amazon alone has a fleet of 750,000 robots zipping around its warehouses. In our hospitals, surgical assistants are helping reduce complications by a third, while other little autonomous robots are doing delivery runs, freeing up nurses to, you know, actually be with patients. From exoskeletons helping people walk again to automated tractors and fields, the service sector is absolutely where you can see this revolution with your own eyes today. So that's the now. But what about the next? Well, it looks like we're headed for the coming home front. The next big move for robots is out of the factory and the warehouse and right up to your front door. So how's this all going to roll out? Well, the analysis points to a pretty clear three-phase plan. Phase one is what's happening right now, deeper and deeper integration into places like logistics and healthcare. But then, phase two, over the next five to 15 years, that's when you can expect to see robots showing up in public spaces, maybe as a hotel concierge, and starting to handle simple chores in our homes. And after that, phase three, 15 years and beyond, 
that's when we can enter the age of the true, general-purpose humanoid assistant. And you know what they say, follow the money. Well, the money is definitely following this vision. Goldman Sachs is now projecting the humanoid robot market to hit $38 billion by 2035. That's more than a six-fold jump from what they were forecasting before. So you have to understand, investors aren't just betting on a cool gadget. They're betting this is the next major computing platform, like the iOS of robotics. Okay, so we've got the tech, we've got the money, but all of this brings us to the most important part, the human equation. This is a tale of two futures, because this kind of technology never, ever exists in a vacuum. And that leads us to a really important new idea we need to talk about, the robotics divide. Now, we've all heard of the digital divide, right? Access to the internet and so on. But this is different. This isn't about access to information. It's about who gets access to the automation of physical work. And that directly affects the one resource none of us can get more of, our time. So. What does that divide actually look like in real life? Well, imagine this. On one side, you have the affluent early adopters. They get what you could call a time dividend. They get to buy back hours and hours from doing chores, and they can reinvest that time in their kids, in learning a new skill, in their health. But on the other side, everyone else is still stuck paying the time tax of all that domestic work. This could create a dangerous situation where the rich get richer in time, creating a compounding advantage, while everyone else gets stuck in a feedback loop of disadvantage. It's a brand new kind of inequality based on time itself. So all of this, it really boils down to a fundamental choice for all of us. Coexistence or conflict. And the most important thing to remember here is that the technology itself doesn't decide the outcome. We do. The choices we make as a society are what will shape the future. And the analysis pretty much lays out three possible paths forward. First, you've got the augmentation scenario. This is the sunny, utopian vision where robots handle all the boring stuff, freeing us humans up for more creative and social jobs. Then you've got the replacement scenario, the dystopia, right, with mass unemployment and social breakdown. But the third path, the one that's seen as the most probable, is the stratified future. This is a world where one group of professionals uses this tech to become hyperproductive and successful, while a whole lot of other people get displaced, creating even deeper social and political divisions. So, look, the robots are coming. That part's not really up for debate anymore. The real question, the one that we all have to start thinking about right now, is how are we going to choose to live with them? This special episode of the AI Daily Deep Dive podcast was researched by Gemini Deep Research and is fully AI-generated.